May the Lord bless his word upon each of our hearts this morning. And welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who comes, the one who delivers us, our Savior. Today is the third Sunday in Advent. We are following Divine Service Setting 1, the service of the word. So page 151 and on the screen. And our opening hymn, launching right in, 331, uh, the Advent of our King. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the declaration of God's grace for you. For in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, 
and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will hope continually. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day. With the mighty deeds of the Lord God, I will come. O God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O God, do not forsake me. Until I proclaim your life to another generation, give power to all those to come. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of of the world and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being of the Church of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and prepare to hear the word of the Lord. The Old Testament reading for this third Sunday in Advent is according to Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. A beautiful proclamation of the Lord's restoration. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute 
Sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. Any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming to you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The epistle reading is according to St. James, chapter 5, verses 7 through 11. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remained steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Worship now continues with the gospel anthem. Praise the one who breaks the darkness, 849.
Jesus died and rose victorious that we may know God by grace. Let us sing for joy and gladness, singing what our God has done. Let us praise the I invite you to stand now in honor of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Alleluia. gospel which is the basis for today's message is according to St. Matthew chapter 11 reading verses 2 through 15. Glory to you O Lord. Now when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ he sent word by his disciples and said to him are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go, and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our worship now continues as you are seated with the hymn of the day, 345. Hark, a thrilling voice is sounding. Hark a thrilling voice is sounding, Christ is near, we hear it say. Cast away the dirts of darkness, all you 
children of the day, startled at the solemn warning, let the earthborn soul arise, Christ its sun Facing the end, or new beginning. There he is, the forerunner of the Messiah, John the baptizer. He's in prison. He's been there not a week, not a month, not even two seasons. Do you know how long he has been there? It's been about a year. You see, he had had the gall to tell Herod Antipas he sinned before God. Herod, you've sinned against God. He will judge you for taking Herodias to live with you. She's not yours, and she's the wife of your brother Philip. Woe to you. Repent. So John preached. He had pointed to a lot of other lives, too. He taught them to straighten their lives out. Do what you need to make it right between you and your neighbor. Take care of those you are to care for. That applied to relationships and vocations of all kinds. Family, friends, even care of servants and slaves. Yes, to obligations of religious leaders. Beware. God's vengeance is coming against all who disobey him on account of their sins and carelessness. You act out against one another. You sin against God. Listen, you must get ready. For one is coming after me who is greater than I. Repent, turn from your errors, your willful neglect of true worship, your cheating, your lying, your sexual impurity, your gossiping, your disobedience. The Holy One of Israel is coming. Many were stricken at heart. They were sorry. They confessed their sins. They were baptized by John, a baptism of repentance. What must we do? He instructed them, serve justice, deal fairly. Give freely for the needs of others from what you have. Others, there were many other others, scoffed. That was John's calling. All that was now history. To think, John's life showed he was filled with God's Spirit, led by him. Yet, he's in jail. 
It's unjust, but he's there. Imagine you were in John's sandals. Or were they now bare feet? And his camel's hair skins. What do you think your thoughts and prayers might be? Remember, you're in prison. John got reports and news from the outside, we know. He still had some loyal followers. Looks as there were two. Likely from them, John heard about the deeds of the Christ. Having conversed with them, he's raised a question. You see, it appears even John was doing some deep, reflective thinking. Could this be he's facing his last days? Feeling trapped, powerless. Who could avoid it? Rethinking, rehashing, wondering. What's next? Are you ready? Are you facing the end? If so, will the very core beliefs that you've held to and lived by truly be proven to be true? There's one thing John took advantage of in this trying time. It's something even you and I have privilege through faith to do. He placed his question through his disciples to Jesus. Are you the one who is to come? Or shall we look for another? The Law Gospel summary of these verses from the Lutheran Study Bible portrays a challenge to faith that we often face. People commonly experience disappointment because of false or unfulfilled expectations. We hope God will act in a certain way, but he does not. We then wonder why. What was behind John's question? The note on chapter 11, verse 3 reads, John the baptizer had used images of judgment to describe the ministry of the one who was coming. Jesus seemed not to be living up to John's expectations of the coming one, a title for the Messiah. How about you or me? Have you faced some question that challenged you at the center of what you are? We can be trapped by our expectations into stumbling, even falling headlong to destruction if we place faith into the wrong truth, the wrong person, the wrong God. John's question reflects a crisis. Answered one way, he faces the end. Answered another way, he anticipates a new beginning. His life's hope hangs on Jesus' answer. Jesus' answer brought forth the most amazing truth. The new beginning is really all about the fulfillment of what God has promised. John bearer of God's prophetic word to prepare the way for the coming one, the Messiah, now heard Jesus recall God's word from Isaiah and the Psalms and Malachi. What this word declared was now happening in real time and among real people. God's word is at work. His word of hope and promise is lived out in all the doings and sayings of Jesus' ministry, which bring forth the kingdom of heaven. Jesus pointed to Scripture, God's eternal word, and so validated John's own ministry as messenger to prepare the way of the Lord. How electrifying! John's disciples became human telephones. They've got a potent, life-giving, and joyous message to take back. Go and tell John what you hear and see. 
the blind receive their sight and the lame walk lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up and the poor have good news preached to them wow these words like pictures showed case after case of human malady and woe brought to a new beginning that's the future for you and me too it is real received by faith in jesus the lord continued for john's ears to hear and blessed is the one who is not offended by me amid worry and dilemma of deepest question and wondering Jesus proclaims the beatitude of blessing all the promises of God find their yes in him st. Paul inspired writes in 2nd Corinthians 1 verse 20 to John Jesus answer affirmed what he wondered essentially Jesus said yes I am the one who is coming I am the Messiah I am the Lord the Holy One of Israel who is visiting his people I am delivering them from every sin and evil and even death that TLSB summary continues with this practical advice to guard against false expectations focus on Jesus and on what he has said and done he is the fulfillment of all our hopes you see in Christ Jesus God reaches with his eternal love into your life and mine his word declares your sins forgiven for the sake of this one the one who is coming but when the fullness of time had come God sent forth his son born of woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons Galatians 4 verses 4 and 5 for every struggle infirmity and failure in body and especially for your very soul yes Jesus said I have come for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost Luke 19 verse 10 he comes to fill you with the good news of life and hope that sustains you even though your body or your spirit now be held in some prison your Lord is fulfilling his eternal purposes for you and in you Jesus revealed I am the resurrection and the life whoever believes in me though he die yet shall he live and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die John 11 25 to 26 the I am of all eternity has come and abides here with us the I am of all eternity nourishes us with his word of life in preaching and devotion and Bible study the I am of all eternity washes us in holy baptism through which he gives his very name and we are robed with his righteousness in Christ and the I am of all eternity the word made flesh gives us his body and blood in the Lord's Supper he has instituted all these means of grace from God communicate to you and me in Jesus the forgiveness of our sins how rich are the scriptures fulfilled in this one who has come God's dear son without him we indeed face our end without hope but in him we have life 
we have the new beginning of God's eternal design and plan. In Christ crucified, risen, ascended, ever living, God never stops making good his word of promise. Go and tell John. Go and tell your family. Go and tell your neighbor. Go and tell the deeds of your Lord Jesus, who rescues you, delivers you from evil, and saves you from eternal death and everlasting punishment. Jesus loves you and his whole world. I invite you to pray with me. Just being the concluding prayer from those Law Gospel summary notes on this section in the Lutheran Study Bible. Lord Jesus, when we struggle with doubts and unfulfilled hopes, remind us of your words and works that assure us of your saving love. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you. Amen. I now invite you, the congregation, to stand. We join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. And at this time, I invite uh, Joyce Berry to come forward. Welcome, sister in the Lord. Um, come up to, right to the baptismal font, and I'll come to the other side. Well, beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples, his apostles, whoever confesses me before men, I also will confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your heart, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you, Joyce, in the name of the Lord. Do you, this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? and the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do, by the grace of God. Do you desire to become a member of this congregation? I do. Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? I will, with the help of God. Upon this, your confession of faith, I publicly acknowledge that you are a member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, Lutheran Church Canada in our denomination name, and of this congregation, 
Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite the congregation all to stand now at this time. Let us pray. <clears throat> and the congregation now also may respond with Amen at the conclusion of these prayers and also the blessing. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing your daughter to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling her both with heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit, she may continue steadfast in the one true faith in the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Joyce, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And now perhaps you might just turn and... Um, uh, here, I would like to present then to the congregation our, our most recent member joining us, uh, praise the Lord, uh, Joyce Berry. And now, Joyce, I'd also like to uh, present you with, uh, well, uh, your Bible verse. Um, I'll let you read the rest, but from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4, th I, 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 I yes. chunked a bigger part here. Yes. 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about any, anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, and here it gets to the part you mentioned, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. And then also this uh, certificate of membership uh, presented to you on this day. Again, God's peace be with you. Let's say uh, welcome, Joyce, welcome, Joyce. Our, sister in Jesus. our sister in Jesus. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. God's blessings. Worship then continues. Uh, you may be seated uh, with the prayer of the church. Father of all mercies, the visitation of your Son has enlightened the darkness of our hearts in every corner of creation. Hear us as we pray in his name and according to his will. O God, you have sent messengers to prepare the way of your Son's coming. Grant us ears to hear and hearts to believe the words delivered by pastors and all who bear your word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, you have instituted the home to be a refuge for husbands and wives and a place of growth and safety for children. Look with favor upon the homes of our land and grant that the faith might be delivered from one generation to the next. Provide also for the homeless. Grant justice and truth among our indigenous peoples and bless all who serve in giving and caring for the less fortunate. Let your kingdom come and your will be done among us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Righteous Lord, you rule over all things in heaven and on earth. Until that day when your Son comes in glory to usher in his kingdom, give wisdom and insight to all leaders that we may live peaceable lives. Grant, Lord, to stop the invasion of Ukraine by Russian forces and end unjust aggression in all corners of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, the prophet Isaiah looked for the day when blind eyes would see, deaf ears would hear, lame legs would leap, and mute tongues would sing. 
until the final day of restoration, draw near to all who have need and call on your name. This day we bring before you Fern and Christina celebrating birthdays, Pastor and Eva, their granddaughter Hannah and family, and neighbor Iva, all battling respiratory illness, Emily Graham, Cheryl and Heinz, Carol and Martin and Jason, Phyllis and those enduring outbreak at senior homes, Shirley, Linda and Gary Lee, our Audreys, Richard, Bill and Twyla, Val, Mark, Emily F., Elsie, Myrna and Gabriel, Hulda, Egon, Rita T., Howard and Hannah, Jack and Rita, Reinhold, Gail and Randy, Judy, Marjorie, Pastor Les, please bless him also with safe travel to Arizona, Joyce and daughters Ginger and Brandy and her family, Renee, and these we name before you now. And I pray for Jerusalem and also for the people that are being executed uh, abroad, and also for Dr. Trinan and his wife, Murray. For my son, Simon. I ask blessing upon my brothers, Carrie and Calvin. We ask you to give them healing in body and bless and uplift them in saving faith according to your gracious will. Bind up those who grieve that they may look for the resurrection of all flesh. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With joy, O Lord, we welcome your servant, Joyce Berry, into communicant fellowship at Redeemer by transfer from St. Paul's Lutheran Congregation in Oliver. Let your blessing attend her with us under your gospel news, fulfilled in Jesus Christ, your Son, to whom John the baptizer looked and received your witness of Scripture fulfilled in deed and truth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, your love invites us to rejoice in your goodness. In every circumstance of life, teach us the joy that comes from knowing your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, that in growing faith we eagerly expect his gracious return. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We bring forth the offerings. <clears throat> Peace the Lord be with you always. And I invite the congregation then to stand. We continue then with the offertory. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the Let us pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The call for the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that he may rule and direct us according to your will. Comfort us in all our temptations and afflictions. Defend us from all error. 
and lead us into all truth, that we, being steadfast in the faith, may increase in all good works and, in the end, obtain an everlasting life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Collect for the mission of the Church. Almighty and gracious God, you want all to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Magnify the power of the gospel in the hearts of your faithful people, that your church may spread the good news of salvation. Protect, encourage, and bless all who proclaim the saving cross that Christ, being lifted up, may draw all people to himself. To the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Collect for Reconciliation. God of love, through your Son, Jesus, you have commanded us to love one another. By the guidance of your word and spirit, deliver us from impenitence and teach us the truth that we might confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and to be reconciled to one another. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Our concluding hymn is number 338, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Peace be with you. This uh, day of the, uh, the third Sunday in Advent, we lit the pink candle, Gaudata, uh, rejoicing, and we heard that also in our readings and our special portions this Sunday. God's peace and blessing be with you. <laughs>